，神父，可以摸噶嘛？你啲作品可以摸。And thank you for coming and visiting us and giving us the honor to have this exhibition today. Thank, thank you. you to everyone. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, thank you for inviting me in return. And uh, this is a wonderful feeling to be really home this time. You know, this is a, a, I've been away for a while and doing my sculpture as well as teaching and you know kind of uh, trying to survive as an artist just frankly it's not an easy easy job so uh, so I want to share with you what I went through the different experience uh, so you know so part of the process of art making is in the included in this uh, presentation and uh, so uh, you know feeling there I'm meeting so many people that I used to know here that was really feel like a homecoming party for me so I appreciate that. At the same time, you know, uh, uh, just if I have a chance to help the younger folks of Macau, you call me a Hong Kong Macau, you know, Macau boy or Macau, and I feel keep me young that way. <laughs> so then I want to work with the younger folks, that younger Macau generation, to help them to to see there are if there are potential in their talent, you just have to build on it and so, you know, and do the best you can to achieve their goal. And they need some examples to say, is there a possibility? Can that be reached? Even though it's difficult, but is there a possibility? So I think if I can serve as a live example for that, I would be glad to do that. So, okay. So I'm going to, you know, uh, would, because we are good, we are start ahead, so I would, you know, do it in a maybe normal time instead of rushing it through. But uh, if you, anytime you have a question, please uh, stop, stop me. And I'm going to make a presentation of, have some fun in it, have some, you know, you know, reference to my uh, ideas in making art. So let's go to, uh, let's see, presentation. And will you turn off the lights uh, so that make it dimmer or something? Yeah, we can. So if it's okay, I'll do it in English. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 
I can say something, but nobody <laughs> might know what it uh, Back to... Uh, is it on automatic? Wait a minute. Is it moving on its own? Do you want this or stand there? No, this will be good. I, I Give me one second. I think I did was on a timer right now. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and that, uh, this is what I normally not normally is not right where I some oh, okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm a little inset right now. You're like a singer. So <laughs> <laughs> I may lose the audience in about three minutes. <laughs> okay, I feel real itchy, but uh, it's okay. Uh, wow. Well, maybe I should, you know, I have a normal volume already, but uh, I, I sometimes I work with uh, uh, my sculpture. I, when I make larger pieces, I make smaller models. You know, this is a maquette about ten inches tall, and uh, made of uh, made in Norway because I was going to you know do a bigger piece when I return to the United States in the Norway uh, uh, residency. So uh, it's a uh, you know a model pretend to be larger. So uh, you might look at the profile, you might not realize actually shape normally like a heart if you look at the top view of it. So, but it is meant to be for entry from from here. You can walk inside; it's about ten feet tall, and then you can go inside and get out. And a lot of my work has that particular element of allowing to enter and uh, and then. So, I was going to this thing keep coming. Up. Am I in the right place? I'm not sure. Okay, so these are the uh, you know. Uh, the material available to me from an art center, they have all these trees that they cut down to make room for building a new concert hall. So all these trees were, in about two days, were all gone, you know, taken down. And the art center director asked me, hey, Fun, I know you're known for making wood sculpture. Would you have any chance to use this wood? I said, yes, I could. Could you save me a couple? And they saved me 15 or 30 of these trees. I say, thank you. And uh, so it's very hard to work with such a large material, and so I end up have to hire somebody who have, who has a portable sawmill. You know what it is? It's uh, like this. Uh, you see, it's, he can carry this portable sawmill and actually plane the wood on site, rather than bring the log to them, which I can't do. At least each one is at least three tons. Those they might look small, but they're very heavy. So then they, you know, I cut the wood there, and this is about two thousand and one. Uh, and uh, you can see then I have all these free lumber. You can say free lumber meaning you don't have to pay for it, but the amount of labor involved is very high, so it's a lot of work to do that. So, so I, I get all this wood have to air dry because uh, the wood, when they are green, meaning they are just cut off, you cannot use them. They, because there are so much moisture inside that you have to let it dry first. So I dry it outdoor for at least six months. So during that time, uh, some people who love wood might like to come and steal a couple of plants because they were good wood. They're cherry, walnut, and uh, uh, maple. Those are common uh, Northern American trees. So, uh, so these are, you have to pay for this lumber that is over 10,000 or more if you go to a lumber yard. So. Anyway, so uh, you should then end up building the piece. And then about, uh, about 10 days or so, the piece end up uh, having the 9-11 incident happen in the uh, United States. So. Uh, I was building that 10 foot piece, I already all of a sudden I changed my mind because it was hitting me really hard that I want to do something about 9-11. So I ended up changing the piece to build it into, instead of two tile lined up, I actually broke the heart shape into a split and then you eventually see uh, the piece in a 110 story high in terms of layers. So I built the piece in 110 layers of wood in reference to the height of the building in 110 story high. So then I ended up not able to finish the, the piece on time because it takes so much longer to build so much higher. But regardless, I didn't care whether I finished or not. I just wanted to do that piece in response to that 
9-11 uh, incident. So this is installation process. My grad student happening, volunteer on the bottom, and I was up there installing this piece. The previous slide show you there in section booth with the art gallery who has the elevator only six feet tall. So people couldn't realize how can I move a sculpture in from such a small for such a small elevator, but uh, what they call a lift here, a lift here. So uh, the piece in all the sections we put together. So eventually, once tile is done, and each layer, I mark the date from, you know, uh, September 11 on to all the way to every layer. I usually be about two, three layers a day, have all the markings on it. And then uh, this give you the height reference. It was shown in a Cochrane Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., one of the one very prestigious uh, well-known gallery in Washington. So, so eventually the piece was uh, finished. It took me a year and a half and uh, finished in display in World Bank, Washington. Because the director of visual art there think this piece has the right meaning to be put in a World Bank where their mission is to help everybody in the world in a humanity way. So, uh, so. So the piece was finished. I'll give you a reference to size. This is the inside, which I love the interior of a piece as well as the exterior of the work in terms of the form and experience. So this is my favorite image of going inside a piece, like walking inside a small Grand Canyon, seeing the layers of wood overlapping, and also have representation of that almost like a yin-yang kind of shape. Uh, actually, the piece were not connected. It looks like they were connected, but actually they were uh, two twists. Give you a little detail here. I told you I marked it uh, by the second tower on number 63. And my mother died on that day. And so I, I finished the first tower. My mother was uh, getting sick with cancer. And uh, so I had to build in between you know, the trips going back and forth in Los Angeles. And uh, unfortunately, one died one day on, on the 63 layer when I came. You know, I have to, at the day that she was. She had passed away in cancer, so uh, so I did become a you know a, in a memorial to 9/11. Also, as a memorial to my mother's date of uh, passing away. So so it ended up taking me about a year and a half to finish the piece, starting in 2011. I mean 2001, and up in 2003. So you all heard me okay so far, in terms of time. Okay. Uh, so give you the scale. The kids always love my work. They just jump right in and without even asking permission. Uh, so uh, the, then this is a, uh, it's funny, it's called a spider key, you know Spider-Man, the movie. It's a spider key because when you're light and small, you can climb up, but big guy like us cannot because it's too heavy. So, so give you this, uh, just to me a light photo of, uh, there's a daycare there, the kids come in and interact with the piece without even you know, understanding why, but actually they might know what it means later on. So this is another view of the piece. Looked like there was a turning vessel, but actually it's actually it's a two separate tower. You look from the top. So that that heart shape was kind of split in, in this way, broken heart, and also is the reference to the architectural location of World Trade Center. They are not lined up. The two tower actually offset. If you understand the actual location of the work. So let uh, change to another scenery that I've been to Norway. For several times, and my sister been there, and uh, this is the one of those beautiful photo of Norway, what I call Virgin Land, a place where, for oh, since the Vikings time, 11th century, there were just two little people have really, really touched the land. It's what we'll called Virgin Land, meaning not people really do much to it. So there are few people in the countryside, everywhere look like countryside anyway. There's no difference between a city and village. So the, the water doesn't move, it's just like a mirror all the time. So to me, as my wife go around, I just stop and take picture every five minutes. So every they, I never get anywhere, so I just, you know. So this is where I was in the residency where I was. Uh, I was uh, invited to a residency where there are 430 people invited to participate. I was managed to make it there as one of the participants. At that time, I was the first U.S. representation because used to be is a Nordic artist center which they only invited Scandinavians. But they find out not to be so inclusive because they find out that international is a better way to go. So they start opening invitation to international artists that year. So I applied and managed to get in so I you know get into one of the studios as you can see here. So, 
So one of the things that struck me as being a foreigner going to Norway is seeing these houses that I've seen since no, no, you know, Vikings time, 11th century houses. These are 11th century houses kept what they call as a museum. Museum outdoor with houses, meaning they don't touch these houses. These are actually, they grow, they have actually, it's called turf top. It's like earth, grass on the roof. And so they actually have using grass as the roof and uh, actually have, you know, use it as roofing as well as using the uh, birch tree to use it as gutter for draining the water off the thing. So this is again normal uh, picture of Norway with the waterfall everywhere. And uh, so I started working with the local tree material the first time that I ordered some wood, they came with a bark on it, meaning outside skin. Normally when you're in America, you order wood coming all clean and straight and plain and smooth. So, and I was doing a piece actually had both sides planned to be smooth like that. I was dealing with joinery in Norway, kind of doing experimentation with it. And then when I saw this bark from the birch tree, B-I-R-C-H, I was just totally find it difficult to carve it away. It just, it's just too beautiful. <laughs> Why do I want to take it away? So actually, halfway through, I kept this original bark in the wood as part of the actual final product of the piece. So this is the first time I actually use wood as in the external skin as part of the, the final product. So, so this is the Norwegian birch, which is a very hard wood, light in color, kind of blonde. And, uh, so this is the studio where I was. Each artist was used to have one studio like this. It is so beautiful. It just I thought I was in heaven for artists, you know, having a, this private studio and having an individual house where you live or with your family. You can bring my family, which I did, and you can just actually live in a house, work in the studio. So Tony been there, my sister been there, my wife. Been there, so. so this is my studio inside, working just like the way I am now, you know, lost skinnier a little bit, younger, but, you know, <laughs> just the same crazy guy and just doing so the piece on the roof are like the boat, uh, is a vessel. They, they, they store the boat reverse. They store the boat upside down, put in the boat house. I was really fascinated by it because kind of defunctionalized what boat is. You know, boat actually float this way, but they kind of turn it upside down. And I tried to hang it, which I actually, I don't, you know, I didn't have any chopstick that I brought with me, so I make my own chopsticks. So I make extra ones, so I just use it to pin my uh, sculpture up here with two chopsticks which is handmade chopsticks with wood. So I was doing drawings, you know, making pieces, and uh, uh, all these pieces over the year has been collected now, has uh, been sold. Uh, some local collector bought it and it's also sold in America. So, uh, so the finally I made a piece in response to the culture there, which is called turf top, which actually have grass grown on the top. And you can also enter inside, made of about three or four different types of trees. They were rowan, if you've been there, and rowan is a common tree, have reddish uh, blossom little fruits, like little small ones in clusters. And, uh, you know, they have some maple and some oak, local oak and different trees. So I mix with different species of trees there. Now, you can see a little go there. It is not more than Photoshop technique. It is realistically a goat was leaving steel today on the roof as part of the current architecture idea. They do have grow, grow grass on roof now as new architecture as well as having the goat living there. Now to make it more clear, there were actually four living on the house. And they were keep them for the month of summer, August and July because it's warm in Norway, only warm for two months have about daylight from all day all the way to 2 a.m. daylight. And you go to sleep at 2, you better wake up soon because 4 o'clock is daylight again. So, so let's give you the size relationship, size the interior. Let me see, was there a slide with a goat on it? Yeah, that's right. Uh, he cannot get to mine because he doesn't know how to get to eat my grass over here. It's really separate. <laughs> So I got humorous, you know, look at it. Yeah. You know, I don't go and get your mom, you know. All in, all in, good, you don't know.
fun with it. So, uh, so the interior, you can go inside and have I have a little stool for you to sit down to contemplate, think about what you want to do, what you are, and smell the wood, that kind of thing. So, so this year we give the time reference. My two little kids were we were fishing while I was working, of course. You know, I was working in a way that I like you guys to have something to occupy with. So this is this is this is right there. Introduce yourself. And this is uh, Chong. Where is Chong? Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I look about the same. My wife was just as beautiful. <laughs> so uh, let's go to another place. In, in my first experience of working abroad from abroad, meaning after I went to America, this is my first experience when outside the country. And it was real scary because I was used to working in the USA and then all of a sudden shipped to get a residency. They call woodworking, wood carving symposium. And as you see my work, I do work with construction, so much called edit, using a method of addition rather than removing, called carving, which is removing. So I'm really not a carver. So I was a little scared, you know, but using chainsaw was not my, you know, cup of tea. So but anyway, so, but one of the architecture you see here is quite different from the other, you know, European country. It has more ornate, a uh, lot of details. These are not nice buildings, but also I'll show you another building. They are kind of run down. You know, quite a number of buildings in Hungary are run down because of lack of money. But to me, visually, this is a very interesting building. <laughs> Nobody would agree with that. But all these windows are different, have holes in them, have, uh, you know, crack of uh, bricks and irregular contour. To me, as an artistic form, it's a lot more exciting than a brand new aluminum glass building they have everywhere because they look just like from the catalog. Let's put this there, architecture, make it quick, you know, designing, so. So with that, my reaction was to make a piece that has that, you know, uh, you know, relationship to the old culture, I mean, architecture as well as feeling being, the way they invited me was so warm that I feel really uh, create, want to create a friendship with them. So this piece actually I produced the night before I start working, you know, I went there the second night I start making a model. So this is a maquette about this poem. This is the piece I want to build. So one side is carved differently from the other side to represent different culture, meeting each other like hands, shaking hands. So again, this is the inside, it's also the outside, representing to the interior of architecture as well as the outside of the architecture and represent the fashion. Little, little small side story. They picked me up in the airport around 12, and to reach the art park where I'm going to work is about seven hours. We stop about seven times. And each time I ask, are we there? They say, no. And I say, what are we doing here? <laughs> we say, drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and the first thing they shake hand with me is, do you want a cigarette? I say, no. And if you want to keep drink, I say, no. Okay. Then we stop for another hour, we stop again. What are we doing? Drinking. <laughs> So you have to understand when you get to the new country, the culture is quite different. And that is the interesting to me, is to have new culture. So I propose this piece, I have only 19 days counting the calendar, 19 days. So I have to finish the piece. The previous uh, 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 residency is a little sometimes longer because they had more money to give people for eight weeks, but I have only 19 days myself. Because I have a family at home, I have to teach so. So I was carving the piece and build the piece from actually they gave me three materials so I asked them to cut into plants. So I tell you, they, the residency provide you food, they give you food in the morning and give you food in the afternoon, they ring a bell and we all eat together like an art camp or art prison, depends on how you interpret it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're not going anywhere, they give you food, go back to work, boom, boom, boom. They want to leave the piece behind whatever you do. So you basically think about think about both ways. You're basically a slave for them. <laughs> give you food, go to work. And leave the piece behind and give you free material, right? So uh, at that time to me I didn't care as long as you give me a chance to work. So that time I was they eat full meal in the afternoon in my Chinese culture. Full afternoon lunch. And I was in America for quite some time, I mean since eighty ninety five, so quite some time. I would used to really like lunch. So they have full meal with wine soup, but all potato and potato and pork. Potato and pork. <laughs> Tomorrow, another form of potato and pork. <laughs> Friday got special, fried chicken. <laughs> so, uh, I was eating full meal the first two days, 
about two o'clock, I was getting sleepy because he was just tired and I was eating full meal and I was tired. So after the second time, day for third, I would just change my mind. I cannot eat that much. But, but the Hungarian, they don't care. <laughs> the guy, one of the Hungarian, just have smoke all day, a white wine on, on his left hand, just like this. And he said, I'm waiting for the idea to come to my head. <laughs> Because they are under the communist idea is that working harder or not harder is the same result anyway. So why bother to work so hard? So they just enjoy the wine, enjoy the smoke, and watching me working. <laughs> mm, looks pretty good. Yeah. I say, what are you doing? Uh, I think the idea hasn't come yet. <laughs> I was swinging away. Boom. And then my right hand start to get sore after the, about six hours, you really get tired. And then I start, first time I start to use my left hand, so I can cut both hands now. So, but now I, both hands are sore, but you know, <laughs> because the joint are not doing well, you know. So, anyway, so I was, then, still doesn't have enough time, he was a 16 feet piece tall, I proposed to do. It's always ambitious when we are young and crazy. So I proposed a 16 feet tall sculpture and I barely make it halfway after two weeks gone. So my plan is to carve different texture on both sides, so chainsaw will come into mine. <laughs> I hate it, I don't want to use it, but there's the only way to get it done. So the right side is chainsaw carving, meaning not cutting it, using the chainsaw as a carving tool. Just go in and come back, go in, come back. Which is very effective, you get textural marks on a piece of smooth wood, but the result is you're actually pounding on your arm like crazy. You don't realize it, but actually you're pounding it like this. Like the guy who fixed the road here, doing that thing. Uh, young and handsome is okay. When you are older, you will feel it. But, uh. <laughs> anyway, so I finished the piece. And 16 feet tall, you the exterior of a, a building, of the interior on the inside, and different carving. And... Uh, uh, you can see with the little hole, remember that I show you the building had the little openings and I really take that as inspiration and transform it into the piece. These are actually, I mean I got no help, I actually pound every marking on the left. The left side is more like scale, you know, scales of a fish and that, all that. Uh, painted with different... Now, <laughs> tell me what you think about me. <laughs> Just kidding, that was not me. I look, I look quite good. <laughs> Give me some points. Huh? But this is the guy who was smoking and drinking all day. You know? And I say, say, I'll wait till you finish, I'll do my piece. You know what? He's doing performance piece. <laughs> He's gonna walk around and pour the wine around it. Very nice, very nice, you know. Mm, maybe I'll do a performance piece. And since that picture, that gave me an idea that, see the photo? That opening I created is the size of a figure, of a human figure. And that make me generate inspiration. I really want to cover him up. <laughs> I really want to wrap him up, you know. But I like to look out from an opening. But I really want to wrap him up because that's embarrassing, you know. So anyway, so... The performance was this? Yeah, he Only was... This. Yeah, he just stand there and take you know, take a photo, you know, have proved that he done the work for the, to report the government. I've done my best. To see it. So I was just working like crazy. Uh, but anyway, so I start building new sculpture. When I go back home, ninety six, I start to get a little sabbatical first time, and I say I have some free time to do my work. So I propose to gain a large sculpture that is thirteen feet tall. You can go in and have a gate here. Uh, why there's a gate which is the most difficult part to build. The gate has to open and close. That means I'm using the same block of wood to create a pin system that you can open and close. You might ask me why I need to close the gate. Anybody to Washington will never believe it. In Washington, D.C., we have a lot of homeless people. So the piece was shown in a university campus where people around the city can come in. But the gallery worry about people coming in to stay overnight, which is a beautiful place to stay with skylight. This is the size of it. It's my class, my students in my class that all wrapped around 12 people inside. This is the doorway. Built it in school. Why? Because I didn't have a studio that day. I had to build it in school. So this is the interior. You can look through the sky, seeing the world, the, the opening of the sky. This, you know, it was interesting photo because it looked like the earth being recreated in the sky. And I also learned one thing. 
I thought I can take multiple photos, but then wait for my best shot in about two minutes. No more clouds. I didn't realize clouds moved until that time. I thought it just stayed there, but it doesn't. It just gone. So it was. There was a good photo. I can never get it again. So, uh, but anyway, again, this is the interior of the piece. So they worry about. So that's why the gate was built. Then I built, and I, in about two years, this is 1999. Did a bigger piece. I was engaged in larger work and want people to come in. So this is a double gate piece, where people would come in through this opening and then go to the interior as well. So. Do you mind that the people would walk in like the homeless? Or I don't mind it as long as they don't do anything bad to it. I mean, if they walk in experience like you are, it's no problem. But they stay overnight and start to put their mattress down and start to create a home that become a problem. But so. it's supposed to be experienced. The home installation is supposed to be. Uh, people should explore the interior and exterior. Right, but not staying there for long term. Yeah, of course. <laughs> So I should charge some rent. <laughs> so this is Chicago uh, skyline and uh, looking at nighttime. And I took this photo with a long exposure. People in photography understand I cannot, in a film camera, you have to ex long exposure. This is, uh, so I, know, I don't know how many seconds. I tried 8, 16, 24, call bracketing to get a photo. That I think I made it uh, here. So daytime, Chicago. And uh, this is... If you understand what this is, this is actually Lake Michigan. This is actually the water. So I teach a lot about art making. You make the positive form, which I was designing, and then the negative also is a vascular form as well. It's a vase, which actually has water in it. So it's kind of a look like my Greek painting. Uh, so, uh, so this is a piece about joinery of two places together. So, uh, interior, double opening. Uh, Roughly about 1,600 blocks of wood if I had to count it, so 10 feet tall. And these are my two helpers. <laughs> actually, they just were pretending. They were. <laughs> my daughter was smart, so actually just holding the drill with me to do anything. But, but, but Chong would like to vacuum, so she kind of vacuum all the so. <laughs> There they are, the helpers. And, uh, and this is people coming in actually enjoy the with ice cream all that. So, yeah. uh, I love this little opening as well. At night time, they become little candle lights. If it is dark inside, light outside, you actually see really light little candles. So really beautiful, like a little T shape. Uh, anyway. Now, this is something you never expected as an artist. All my beautiful work for <laughs> 2,000 hours, people start doing graffiti on it, they call. I didn't see that because somebody called me from Chicago, hey Fun, you know, somebody did something to your piece, may I tell you what it is? I said, don't tell me, don't tell me, <laughs> don't, you know. So I find out that people actually left their names, like people leave their names in the trees. They actually starting on that day after I left, and May 5th, they start Right at eye level, right at your eye level, the first one, because they write down their date on it. So you can check where they are, so there are all kinds of things. But so far, no, no bad languages, which is acceptable. People just want to leave their name behind. So, and nobody can see them because they're inside. So you can see going around, they go around the eye level, and they go down, it's easier. And they go up afterwards by checking the date, and then eventually they go outside as well. I think Chung Chung, you will know what that is. Now, with that, is a, in a way, looking in a bad way, is a negative thing. People deface your sculpture. But then the curator, after I'm carrying all my sand, the red to send all these graffiti away, we actually think about a second time. This is a histor historical record of all the people who've been to your place. They actually sign your name, basically, on your piece. So. In a positive way, that was a really interesting kind of a record of all the people been there, including all kinds of languages. So, including the time reference to Pokemon, you know what year it is. It's when yeah. he was, what, four or five? Oh, you were, 99. Yeah, 99, exactly. So that he is. Just imagine with me, every block of wood has writing on it. I don't have any blank including the top. They climb, they help somebody climb to the top, write the name on it. They jam it between the space if it's occupied. This is how 
how crazy people want to leave the name behind something, which is true in today's world. Right? So. <laughs> anyway, you can see all kinds of language, all kinds of stuff, including people. And also, your structure are very architectural yeah, architect architect, right, of, right. of, of in the tents right. and the, the nomad kind right. of thing, human. Human reaction, yeah, yeah, connection. So, so it turned out to be a negative thing, turned out to be positive. So the museum wanted to collect it as a piece with people's writings on it. And that become an interesting thing. So, so that leads to what I'm doing recently with this piece that I'm allowing you all to write a message to my piece. Before I was not really ready for it. You know, don't touch, you know. <laughs> now it's please touch. <laughs> and so this is a piece again, you know, I kind of repeat myself a little bit today. It's a piece for my mother who died of cancer in 2002. And, uh, you know, I was doing exhibition in Australia and one night that emotional really attack that you think about your mother and what she have done for you. I couldn't work at all, my eyes would fill with tears, and I was having to do a lot of sculpture in a short time in Australia, so uh, nothing you can do when you're emotionally attacked, you just have to do something or, you know, or take a medicine, but I choose not to, so I, so I finally, I was cutting a lot of wood, I always have wood scraps, and, put, and then I start building a little vessel form like this one. This is the first one I built with 101 blocks, as a symbolic response to my mother's 100% love to me, I just want to return 1% more. And uh, as, as the way she said, many, many players, as a Catholic, we were raised Catholic here in Macau. She was, you know, we were all baptized, I was baptized, and I went to church all the time with mom, but uh, she do a lot of rosary, you know, for me, so I say, at least I'll do 101 block as a symbolic reply. So this is uh, both serve as a vessel form, something for her to take it with her to travel to somewhere peaceful and you know beautiful, or as also a double meaning for her body being part of the skeletal form of that. And my sister who was around and say, well, this is lovely. Can I share that feeling of loss and deep rising do something for my mother? You know. Well, I think you can, but you cannot make sculpture. So I say, when we fold paper bowls when we were little, you know, you know, why don't we, you fold the bowl and we write some message tomorrow. And she was also the chairman of uh, the Cancer Society. And she said, I have a lot of members who are in contract with cancer, who are cancer you know, fighters for helping others to cope with cancer. So they start inviting, can may I invite my, the members of her Cancer Society to participate in this piece. I say, well, yes and no, you know, i never done this before. Yeah, I mean, but I think for the meaning of it, it's something to do. So, so I decided to show the piece in exhibition where I invite people to write little books and uh, it actually happens here. This is the first original installation and, uh, and then uh, evolved into another f five exhibitions, two exhibitions in Australia because they are being asked to do it again and I say yes please do it again. Without, usually I think do a new exhibition I wanted to have new work but this one was just highly demand for something meaningful so I done it again. So until the, this exhibition in Hong Kong where the bowl getting bigger and more and more and the, the writings of me getting some how both ways, some of them getting real touching, some of them getting more general, like, you know, a child want to get, get admitted to university, you know, get an MIT to, you know, get a present or toy and, you know, uh, with one of those electronic toy in Christmas to having a kid by New Year to, you know. The most touching one was when I had an exhibition in Queen Elizabeth, uh, Hong Kong, that was the if you read through some of the books writing, you will find it the most touching because everyone who writes books there were involved with someone who is sick in the hospital, except a few has baby born at the same time. But uh, so it's pretty touching. Do you collect the message? Yes. Do you collect all, all of them? Yes, I have. This is only a sample of about 10%. So I have over close to 2,000. Yeah. Yeah. At one point, uh, they told me they were so popular that they have to have a quarter for how many seven or eight books per day because people want, once you see people start signing up, they like to do it as well. So they become.
Not that that might work so popular, but they just want to write something. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what you are seeing right here, same piece that I did in 2006 in the University of Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, where they gave me a residency of two months to, to do the work. So. Let me know I'm going too slow. Is that okay? I'm not putting you to sleep. No, you're not. No? Okay. I don't know why I'm going to do it. But anyway, I'll, I'll keep going. So the messages were there, and the T, uh, I think I explained to you, is uh, antioxidant content to have, they use it as a symbolic meaning of cure or healing. So that not necessarily you drink tea, you don't have cancer, but it's somewhat kind of hope for healing, hope for recovery. So, uh, so to me, tea is a Chinese culture. It's somewhat we had since we're little, uh, since with the first year of Chinese history to now many years that we believe is something good for us. We do that all the time and, and I believe in it. So they become part of our culture as a also is, is a, you know, it's also I use it as a material, the shape, a cast like that is more like reference to candle, the wick of a candle. When you go to Catholic church, you burn candle to make some, you know, worship or respect to, to, to the Holy Mary and so forth. So to me, it's a, you know, it's a good re, you know, reference to the meaning. So, so people write uh, messages and put it down. And these are some of the really beautiful calligraphy as well. Some Chinese calligraphy are quite beautiful. They wrote it down. And some, some of uh, Ahoy's messages, Tony, Ahoy, uh, one of them is uh, your good friend's message in there, hoping his grandmother, his daughter grow up nice and beautiful, all that. So to me, it's almost like sharing people's diary in a public sense, which is interesting, you know, something private and being shared publicly. It's also those messages in the temple, if you go to Lama Temple, yeah. people will hang the messages in They the do? Tree. Okay, yeah. Oh. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. like it's a similar kind of activity, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So this one you can see people actually die and then, you know, kind of like, a, and then to very beautiful Chinese poetry. That one is Ahoy, uh, Tony. He's from our friend Ahoy. Uh, so they put them down. So in Hong Kong, the University of uh, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, I had an exhibition with five thousand square feet of exhibition space. So I had to produce almost three work. Uh, just to occupy the space uh, in uh, 2006. So, uh, another piece I want to share with you is called House of Identity. Uh, is a piece that I first time came back, returned to Hong Kong. I wanted to do my intent was to do a piece for the people in Hong Kong where I grew up with as well. So I couldn't think of anything that I could include them. So I thought of Hong Kong phone book should have all their names and identity and address and phone number in it. So. So you can see all these little bricks here, little compartments are Hong Kong phone book. And the choice of the form is basically, I wanted to have some Chinese feel, uh, flavor, put it this way, it has a Chinese castle kind of a curve to it. As you know, I'm not a realistic representation artist. I don't do actually the, the Beijing, you know, Tapo or that. To me, there are too many of them already made, so I don't need to recreate that. So I kind of take that little kind of essence of the form, which is the curve, so you can see a little subtle curve there to give you that kind of Chinese temple uh, architecture. At the same time, allow an opening and entry. So you can see the size reference to it. Uh, if you are in my work, understand, too big opening, people don't care to come in. Too small, they can't get in. So you have to have certain kind of appropriate size. If it's about four feet, four feet and a half, that would be the best that they come in. They would like to come in. It's like catching fish, you know, what size your cage. <laughs> uh, so interestingly, you can see that actually I exposed the first page of the phone book. You actually can read Chinese, in this case, or English, the website of the, of the university I was in. And also a little, you know, and also exposed, you know, my friend's address in them. When they invited to the opening, they were shocked. They saw their name on the first page, <laughs> you know. <laughs> my in there. So they were, they were shot. So. And then I discovered that not everybody's names on the phone book. 
So I still want to include them. So when they come in, I have some rice paper for them to write their own identity. For example, their bank account, the, <laughs> <laughs> the BMW license plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to please write it. So identify who you are and then roll it up and put it on the hole that I pre-drilled in the piece so we can lift that. And then I found out that was very popular. They get filled up in about three days. You know, everybody want to put their names down again, you know. So they filled up and I have to take it out and, you know, put new ones in. So, uh, so this piece is called House of Identity. Yeah, it was done in 2006. And after that, I start using phone book as a material because I find the phone book is quite interesting. So I cut in yellow pages in, uh, in my marker and cut this piece kind of mixing the circular tree form with the, these are actually yellow, yellow pages. And you cut them, I find out they are really generating different wood patterns. That one is yellow page, this one is white pages. It's all white. And then with these columns, look like the columns from the newspaper. So, uh, this telephone book is from Scotland, right? No, this one, this one was actually USA. Yeah, I have different. This one was made. Uh, the like one is his color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this different pieces with the phone book. And uh, uh, so I continue doing those pieces for plug of paces. Uh, you know. Uh, my gadget called this guy on pieces, <laughs> and uh, and these are kind of the more like a kind of vessel pieces that can contain to me water, or water can contain or break them as well. So pine is a metaphor for so playing power struggle. Who is bigger? So I was given the site which has actually has a running stream. Then I was asked to do a piece about that site. So it's called site specific sculpture that I did a piece actually have a full size you know, vase, and then these three actually exactly puzzle together to become the identical one form. So in other words, these two, the three together add together equal to this. So then being separated by the running water. So this was done in Baltimore in 2002. So there they are, my helpers. slaves. <laughs> 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 Uh, this one I get another vase from the reflection, so it's kind of interesting. So, this is 15, this is, when the outdoor, very small pieces wait, have to be a lot larger to compensate with the scale. So this is 15 feet high, it's about three me 4 meters. So another place I've been to, which is Australia, this is an interesting pool concept. It really reinforced my idea about interior exterior. There's ocean water come to the land, fill the pool with seawater and then become interior water and then flush back. So every time you get fresh seawater coming in, the idea of swimming in salt water in a swimming pool. <laughs> Think about it, it's kind of interesting. Most swimming pools are fresh water or chlorine smelling water. So this is interesting. So I was, I was doing a, a sculpture called Sculpture by the Sea Project. They invite sculptor over the world and then you compete, you know, about 300, you get in and all that. So I was to do a piece in this is in Sydney, Australia in 2003. Uh, just a couple of pieces to give you an idea. Other sculpture make a piece with like a giant square, like a picture frame. Uh, his idea is seeing a picture frame with the ocean coming in and out. So basically it's a live picture frame. The water waves coming in and out. And the wood come from a, a discarded, you know, a railroad trap material that people discard. They just use it to rebuild. It's huge. This thing is like uh, you know, six to eight meters tall. Uh, nearby my sculpture, there was a sculpture sitting there for a few days, and I thought the sculptor would come in and take the cover off and show up the sculpture. I was still about 30 yards away. I never seen the piece close up. And people were surrounding, and I said, this is opening. How come the people still covering the piece? There's no way, you know. So I found out when I get closer, the piece is actually like this. <laughs> It was never a cover. This is carved marble. This is actually carved marble. Actually, there's no interior. It's just suggested being carved. Uh, then this is my piece, which is you know my the work that I was doing at that time. Uh, 
I have to get a structural engineering to sign off my piece that my anchoring, my structure are sound strong enough to sustain 60 to 90 miles wind on that next to the ocean. So sometimes you have to make sure your piece is safe enough that you won't break, fall on somebody's head. Interior, I always love this kind of interior pattern. They say this is a, to be a to, to have a fantasy to be inside a basket. So this is the closest thing you can get to. So, so I continue to do this piece. This is 2010. Uh, this is only a one or two person kind of size. You can get in and only look through the sky. A very small opening. This piece was recently collected by a hotel because there's so many people want to take picture with the piece. Then the, the owner of the hotel said, I have to keep it here because there's so many people want to come to my hotel. <laughs> <laughs> so, things happen. Uh, other small work that I just go through real quick that I do normally for exhibitions, not for site specific, not necessarily for, for public space, not for commission. And just my own kind of, you know, interest in creating interesting sculptures with the same method, we do uh, small blocks of wood repeating itself many times. Uh, this is uh, called X in the exterior, uh, proposal for large sculptures, uh, a wave, just actually I made in 2003, just get collected this year. For, uh, so. <coughs> called uh, Hatch, nice skin kind of separate itself to have get bigger. We call uh, squeeze, natural material tree trunks into uh, oak material. Opening. As you can see, they are getting a little bit bigger uh, over the time. This 2006. Uh, one of my, this is two, you know, this work is about two years old, I mean 2012 maybe less than two years old. I ever been to see the Terrace Mountain in China, the rice field? I haven't been on it, but I've seen the picture to be loving it, really beautiful. So I want to build a sculpture that has that kind of uh, rice field uh, uh, feel, flavor. So I make a drawing, you know, the idea with having grass grown on a vessel form. And uh, eventually I built the piece. While building the piece, I actually built the piece reversely and I found out the reverse form is so much more exciting than being a regular mountaineer form. So. It's like a volcano. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So actually it's, uh, it did the interior of it. Uh, so I learned how to grow grass and I have to time my grass that how long it takes to grow that much. So I, if I take three weeks to grow that much, I plan it backwards three weeks before the openings to make sure that there is enough grass to show up at the opening. Otherwise, it would be just a black grass I mean, dirt piece. So counting three weeks before, there was a Saturday, me and Chong and my two helpers delivered the piece. It was flooding rain. I mean, we just non-stop four hours and I have no choice to, to install the piece. So the piece was installed and then, you know, eventually grown. So actually, I have only one inch wide and maybe inch and a quarter thickness of soil to sustain the grass, which I never been to a farmer. I grew up in high rise in Hong Kong, so I don't even know how to grow grass. And it was a lesson to learn. You might think it will keep on growing, but after six weeks, the nutrients and the soil and the water are exhausted, they cannot grow any longer. So it's about six weeks they can make. They get longer and they become, you know. Uh, Where do you build that piece with grasses? The, the piece was built in USA in my studio and then installed on, on the gallery in front, uh, which is right here. This is the outside of the gallery. The gallery is two story on top of a building. So it's the rooftop gallery where I have the piece outside. And this is American grasses. Just now you use grasses from Finland, right? Yeah, that, the grass, actually now you remember, that actually come back to me and I want to grow grass again. But in Norway, I didn't know how to grow grass at all. The guy helped me to grow grass there. I didn't know how to do it at all. So this is actually American, uh, they have, I feel fine, they also shade grass and grass grow with normal sunshine. This one actually grow in the dark. I mean, in, in, in no sunshine. So these are aluminum flashing that actually keep the soil in place on the edge of the wood and also uh, become reflectors. 
so they give a little double image. Of the glass what about the water? If you put water in you? I have to water three times a day. And, and they drain away underneath? No drain at all, they absorb it all. I don't have excess water every time. I, you cannot, you cannot hose it. You just, you just, you just spray, spray, and you know, small spray. Into each level. Pain, painful, painful labor job. <laughs> I have to do it three times a day because the sun hits it, it will dry it right away. With the metal, especially like cooking it. So I have no external irrigation system to, to sustain, like the actual, the rice field has a whole mountain of soil and water. So, so visually it's beautiful, but sustaining it is really painful, it's hard to do. So uh, on a hot day, I have to go there every day, three times. And, uh, so interior, so I continue, is on going, this X axis is an installation about changing temperature and weather. This is, as you all know, I work with wood, right? I call it everything, including sawdust of all colors and all kinds of wood. So all these accumulating of sawdust is in my studio, so I finally get to use them. So the first thing you come across with this piece called, uh, what I call, uh, aim high. You actually go up, go, you can go straight or go up to upstairs, and then you see the people can interact with the piece again. So what he's doing is grabbing three choice of sawdust, one is uh, cedar, which is the most smelling, really good smelling, like the Shangjiang here, have very strong taste, you know, they, they do you might want to. And the left, very light, very colorful, orangey, and then this is hickory, has the mult, what I call multi-character kind of wood. It's a person with many character, many perplexity. It's called hickory, you can see the wood have different kind of a tone and texture. This is then more worn and more darker and heavier. So you can choose whatever you want and play in a way, drop it to, that's your friend, please. And who, who grabbed the, the, the choice of sawdust and then start aiming from second floor and aim at the piece called aim high at the target. So eventually you want to aim the middle. <laughs> I just guarantee you might not make it at all, you know, because of the height you might not aim it. Just like we are all trying to be on top of the society, we might not end up exactly where you want to be. But we want to compete to try it again, to get more sawdust. Like me changing from science major to go to art major, and I'm more successful in a way to make it a little bit higher up. So, so basically, you're basically creating a target from the top. Then the, the, the sawdust will land on different level and create different what I call landscape of what we are being distributed in the society, you know, different layers, different kinds, different kinds of things. And also, ironic, ironically, the darker, heavier sawdust, which is walnut, did not make it to the top. It's the smaller cedar who made it to the top. Message. <laughs> small, just don't underestimate small guys. So. <laughs> So this is basically the piece interactive. At the same time, the rest of them, you're basically seeing the temperature change from getting a little bit more uh, brown and grainy and become more desert to become cold weather. This is actually very icy cold feelings made up of actually salt, you know, uh, salt we cook. As you know, I, look, I like, you know, the actual the gesture of that come from the cooking. You know how you cook the different thing at the same time. You know, it's the reference to when you go to a funeral. Sometimes you leave the last drop of so soil to the people who are departing you. So that two combination of experience bring me to bring that build that uh, aim high piece, and then eventually build this installation called I call almost a seasonal change from cold fall, spring, fall, summer, and then become winter. Give you the science relationship. Uh, the pattern formed by the sawdust is all natural in a way, but at the same time is, you know, how snowfall on the ground would be similar. Uh, I also create some small vessel pieces, which is interesting experiment with mixing sawdust with glue. Many people cannot figure out how I make this. Uh, some sculptor might have find it interesting challenge to create a, a little vessel form with actually sawdust, Glue and salt. 
So the white particle comes from the song. It's, it's a casting process. And the background is made up of uh, uh, sawdust and wax. So, uh, this is purple heart sawdust. The other one was uh, uh, cedar. So, and this one is, uh, uh, I think it's, I think it's hickory. I think. Yeah. So smaller work people, the good thing about smaller people can collect the big installation just for a look at. You spend a lot more time on something you don't get returned <laughs> than something smaller you get more return. Uh, and then the outdoor piece, you walk through the gallery from outside to inside or upstairs and then inside to outside. Back to my interior exterior, which I really like to really reinforcing that concept. So this is a piece made of hickory with a multi-pole kind of grain structure and uh, to create that kind of uh, salt, uh, snow falling on the piece, I actually drops white salt on the piece to create that image. So while I have rain coming down, which is great for my grass piece, I'm so excited. I don't have to water my plants, my grass today. I have to go 1,000 miles an hour and just go make sure to cover the salt so it won't get wet. <laughs> so it's a nightmare either way. <laughs> A uh, couple of pieces to show you commission work that I want to, you know, really get this opportunity to remember a good friend of mine called Skip Platty who actually had helped me to build this piece. I want to just give you the opportunity to say he just passed away a year ago and it was really hard for us, you know. It's really hard for me that he has been so generous to my family and helping me out many, many big projects. So this is a drawing for when I proposed public art sculpture competing. You show drawing, you show model, and this is one of the drawings I show proposing where I would have put the sculpture. One idea, second idea, and third idea. It's make of pastel and chalk and uh, application with the acrylic dry medium, a wet medium first and then dry on top. So I pre basically creating a chalkboard to draw from. So uh, this, I told somebody I work with sculpture and I draw on the side just to give myself a little called candy pieces so I feel like I've done something that day. After I five hours of work, I get only this much, you know, so. Uh, so, uh, so eventually I build a piece. It's made up uh, 15 feet high, made up of cherry and walnut uh, for a public art commission permanently in Arlington, Virginia. So, <laughs> so he got about that size when he was building this tall, this sculpture. So that's my son over there. So this is the texture created by having the saw apply like not a chainsaw this time with a circular saw to create texture on it. Uh, commission for Chinatown Metro, one of the the, the Washington DC, they actually want the uh, commissioner artists end up to be me that commission to make a piece to identify the exit to Chinatown in Washington DC. That you know, as you know, if you ride in Metro in Hong Kong, they have multiple exits called ABCD, but they have the Museum of National Museum of American Art. Or go to the ball game to see the concert, which is not an exit. But this one is exclusive due to Chinatown. So they want to tell people, hey, if you don't know how to get to Chinatown, look for the big fan. Which is this piece. And I was commissioned in nineteen ninety seven, finished in two thousand. Just to tell you about USA bureaucracy, okay? I finished the piece in 2000, dedicate, open, right? My name, plan, just installed last year. <laughs> Took them 12 years to get my name on the piece. Is so. it public space? It's a uh, metro. Yeah? It's a uh, transit place. But they, I said, I'm willing to do it for you. But they said, no, we have to wait until all the artwork installed and have it all consistent signage, graph design it together and put it on. You can wait forever, but so uh, anyway. Uh, Chinatown, this piece, I, they ask for one thing, has to have light component. They also have to have uh, Chinese flavor in it. So as you see my world, it might not necessarily look like this, but they have to have Chinese flavor, so I have to somewhat incorporate the motif from China, the chopstick, which is these are 12 feet, 13 feet long chopsticks that are built in wood. And then with the color 
if you can look this, the colors is a very American color. The bottom is Chinese color, flag color. It's a mix of where Chinese American are in Chinatown, or what we are. Made of the 12 sections, which is basically the 12 sub Yisang Chilean, the 12 lunar calendar of Chinese uh, calendar. So, uh, Chinese lantern, which you see right across the street. <laughs> Chinese New Year, Cho Tang Long. So it's there permanently. Every time you go to Washington, you can go to take metro and you want to find Chinatown. Even if you don't if you speak the language, you will find it. So they become a landmark there. I mean, kind of like a motif. So he do keep the lecture long, but this is basically uh, the name, title of the piece. My father kind of title of the piece called Wa Yu Ji Gong is the, the glory of the Chinese descendants. And uh, I have a actually better idea than what you see here, which they, the selection committee loved my idea of actually projecting light image of the character on the ground. It's like the word wa is on the ground. So when you walk through the piece, you get the light image on your body, get lightened by the Chinese character. You're walking through the light gate of China, of Chinese world. And then after you left, the piece, the word is still on the ground. So the selection committee loved that idea, but being public art, the the, the, the metro, you know, company say that they cannot accept that idea because they have to maintain it because they have to keep changing light bulbs. And I really say BS, you know, you guys change light bulb for all the lamps in the studio. Why not change my sculptures, uh, you know, projection lamp? Well, they say it's a different group of workers. They only you know, work on the station once every four years for maintenance while the other people were different unions, whatever. So they never allowed me to do I was really upset, but still upset, but nothing I can do. So I was volunteering myself to change the light bulb. They say, no, sorry. <laughs> oh, we have insurance, won't cover you. You know, you can sue us for five minutes if you get hurt and you cut your fingers, you know. So now I just have to substitute with a, a secondary method. It's by cutting, cutting, uh, 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 and what I call opening in a, in a metal aluminum. So the light is behind. They become a light word, but not projection. So public art, you have to give up something always. But these are huge chopsticks. Uh, give you a sign. This is Emma. Send me a picture. So. Uh, a piece I did not too much of collaboration, but this is a piece I did collaborate with a performance artist uh, who doesn't do that much construction and building sculpture, but she's just performed. But I just go real quick. This is all 13 rings of, you know, cross section of a tree I just cut that people use it for firewood. They just cut it this way, like cutting cucumbers or Chinese ji gua, you know, ji ji gua, ji ji. So I was just going real quick. This is top wheel. This piece called Cells. It's Rene Redin, which is you know another artist who I co uh, cooperate with. Uh, originally, by proposal, I want to do the piece about ten feet high. No, I mean for, for eight feet high interior. You know, one thing about you did not study engineering. That's what happens, you know. <laughs> Without the structural component, the piece is made of tension between the the what they call zip ties. It just won't able to hold it until you have interior concrete, you know, you know, concrete structure, which doesn't. So. The piece end up about four feet high, and these are the zip ties, a plastic thing to tie electrical cord together. We use it as a tying agent, and uh, this is the performance piece we did at the week week of the performance. She spent about one week to just put each one with the material called water soluble membrane. They use it to build clothing so they can do the pattern on sewing the clothes and then they wash it in the washing machine and then the, the, the paper dissolves and become clothes. So. Anyway, she used the materials that they can water dissolve by water. What she was doing during the opening, nobody even knows she was inside the sculpture for the two hour span of time. She was right there. Designing a costume looked like the rings like the peeler, uh, similar texture, similar look. She was right there. She created about you know a few hundred of these water balloons filled with water, and she have a needle in her hand and just puncture the water balloon that become a squeeze bottle, and squeeze the water towards each 
opening, which is water soluble in the brain, that dissolve over her application of water, and then opening up the lower layer of the rings by about one hour and a half, people start to discover she was inside the piece. So that was whole performance. We worked for two months just to get that one performance. And when we said to each other, we will never do it again. <laughs> but we still become good friends. So. But the image is beautiful. I think her, her costume matches it. And she, you know, basically this is the water balloon. I think it's a very natural kind of a becoming like an insect who is creating a, you know, a man-made form for, for, for shelter. Uh, this is almost closing, so sit tight. Um, you know, we're done in about a few minutes. This is the, my recent project of this kind of tree thing. I start to light tree more and more by looking at them. And, the, and the, I'm getting a call for people who have trees falling down telling me to do something to it all the time now. So this is a big oak tree that in University of Maryland has on campus. Huge tree that called White Oak Chapel Oak that fell down last year. And people ask me to do a piece to it. So very clear, this tree get cut down. And this is about four feet wide, just to stump of it real quickly. And the size. This guy who did the, all the cutting from school. And then I propose a piece that will, or again, enclosing people who have opening and all that, that we create using the wood to become a piece that they can really say, well, the trees have transformed from a tree that become a sculpture. So they can still what I call have a second line for the tree rather than no more. Because the people a lot on campus love this tree so much they can you do something to it <laughs> or for it. So you actually had these sketches and make the piece. This is what I did the last three months before I came here. Working like a slave for my own idea. <laughs> so that large project. Yes, yeah, large project. So uh, so I get a helper, which is lucky, a grad student who uh, can use the chainsaw and cut these basically tree trunks uh, into multiple plants. Cut it on the bandsaw, the slice into pieces. And then now my helper become a little bit more functional <laughs> <laughs> and getting bigger. And that's my daughter, as you can see. She's done how to use that drill and help me. And, uh, Cutting the wood in advance. So each piece has custom made, no two pieces alike, because the bark grows differently. So you have to adjust the angle and everything to it. So it become a tediously spend about an hour and a half just to make one layer. And Pui has the easier job in a way, just to screw it down. And so it's only one hour. Oh, every three layers, well, every layer takes about three hours. Two layers of design, one hour of screwing down. And she always does it happily, do it right, Pui? Want to do it again? <laughs> so this is me in the studio, and uh, it's not a helper on Saturday, student from UM. I tell you, after so many times, this, I used to have tennis elbow, hurt on the top, now this is the bottom part hurting. Even using chopsticks hurtful, that's really unhappy because I had to eat you know, chopsticks. Yeah, this is the top, you know. So this is 10 feet high, the last layer or two that we should finish. So, uh, she's good that she's not afraid of height. That's good, you know? Okay. <laughs> so this is quite high. This is actually, you see the ladder is 10, six, 8 foot. You know, ten. And then take it apart. And all my work had to be in section, otherwise it would become permanent installation in my studio. So this is... This is 5,000 pound plus, at wow. least, at least. Because only take five guys to lift one layer, you know, it's very heavy. So this, school, this student here helped to crank the machine, the other helped to move. All former students and current UM students, uh, grad students too, and then they are doing the easy part, they're holding the safety belt, make sure that nobody falls. <laughs> chong Chong and Pui Pui. Yeah. Right there, Chong Chong holding the belt, which you can see, it's the same bell here through the ceiling and couple of that. Make sure it won't fall on them. Yeah. I think if you slip, they will fall on them, right? So. <coughs> it's my studio and they're working there just to, just to install. It's a nightmare to move this piece because it's bigger than the truck allowed in America. So it's bigger than the width of any truck. 
unless you get a permit called wide load where people move houses, you know, things like that. So, so we have a design system to get a trailer that's low enough to clear what I call 13 feet 8 is the maximum you can allow to move something that tall on highway, otherwise it will hit the over ramp, you know, the gritty tinky way. So we have to get a get a get a get a what they call a, a, a trailer towed to my to the truck and then build this uh, temporary uh, structure to hold the piece in place. You know. uh, traveling on the highway, moving at night. Take two days to to think. One day to move, one day to start chong chong now because right here, <laughs> not vacuuming anymore, right? <laughs> It was a nightmare, it was raining all day and on and off. It was just muddy. Uh, if you're not a lover, you mostly quit before I even asked you to, to come help me. Right, so. so there were take about eight people to help. Uh, fish, uh, just finished uh, December 20th. Excuse me, can I this at the exhibition you have to put the, again the screws? Screws, screws. And remove the planks in the middle. You have you remove all the planks in the middle to transport. You have all those uh, so all the planks. So, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, those are temporary, just to hold the piece together for transport, so the people can grab it. Also, make sure the ring is in place. Yeah. yeah. So this the that's the day we actually put the wood preservative on to keep the piece uh, more waterproofing for outdoor. So uh, the opening is on 25th of January this month, and you all are welcome and invited to come. <laughs> I'm sorry I cannot provide the airplane tickets, but hopefully <laughs> your hearts are there. <laughs> so Chung Chung is helping. And, uh, uh, this is me at the, coming down the stairway. So uh, uh, this is what I plan to present to you, and thank you for bearing with me for the last an hour. So, yeah. any questions? How many hours on this last work? My own hour is 250. 250 hours. And she have own hours, which I do pay for. <laughs> <laughs> so those are register hours with my sons. And uh, grad students who help me the chainsaw work have another 80. Because I'm dealing with all labor work, you know, such as trees. We are not a company to cut it for you, things like that. But why I do it is the love that drives you crazy. You just want it. You just want it, not for money. It's, it's, it's something you have in your head you want it to realize. So while we are sharing an idea, realizing an idea takes all kinds of efforts. Right? Sometimes, well, architecture, same thing. I am paid as an idea for this building, but he has help. He has money to help to build. But for our field, we are the we are the hardest. We we design, we have the idea, we draw, we 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 we, we plan, we buy the material, we build, we store, we deliver, we install, we move them, we doing everything. So uh, why we do it is the love we want. Uh, so. How about the piece uh, displayed in public space? Are they being commissioned? Uh, the Chinatown Commission, mm -hmm. so I get paid quite well. Uh, and then this piece is commissioned in partially, not commissioned permanently, but commissioned with material supply. Mm -hmm. Kind of partial, give you a little stipend to help pay for the course. Mm -hmm. So by the Arlington Art Center. Uh, I just want to make sure that I don't lose too much money. So we still have food in the kitchen to eat. So to make sure that is, you know my wife won't be screaming at me. So, so my idea is to make sure I just I sell enough work or get enough such stipend to to keep the the sculpture continue and surviving is the right word. And then then I have a job to sustain mm -hmm. my family and my my cost of living whatever. And. Uh, so just to answer the question, you know, if I want to make money, you know, spend all the time, you know, making egg rolls, I call. Fried rice would a lot better off in terms of money return. Because one bag of fried rice, we can make a lot of money. So that's what a lot of restaurants in America are doing. In Chinese culture, you know, restaurants are good in terms of... <laughs> I've done it before. My wife's come from a restaurant family. You, you basically serve everybody else. 
you know, who has coming for birthday to having a meal. So uh, you, we do, I think, fulfill other people's needs. It's more spiritual, it's more more emotional, and which is hard, to me very, you know, very meaningful thing. You know that we 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 live for others' presence. So as other people's emotions, right? Think about why do we live for our parents? Why do parents live for us? Or work so hard to pay for everything we want. It's, 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 it's the L-O-V-E or the emotion, the feelings. Uh, but we, life is practical. We need to survive, you know. So we need to still get money to pay for furniture, shoes, everything. That. Uh, but to me, uh, making art to me is a sharing experience. Uh, that's why thank you for coming to share my work. That means I feel so much better after 10 years doing this piece for my mother. I don't feel as painful because I think my mother is happy that I'm sharing her love with other people. I think, I think, that, that, I think that is happening. So, uh, and, and making art sometimes can be a selfish act. I, I, I just do it for myself. If you don't care, I don't sell it to you. So it's more like, but it's a luxury thing to say. But at the same time, come down to it, we have to pay the bill. And uh, where do you get the money for it? So, uh, so I, in a way, somewhat have the opportunity a second time. You know, after science didn't work out, I have a second chance to do, pursue what I love to do and able to sustain. Uh, just to share with you the percentage of success in already is so little that I hate to tell my students, you know, they ask me, what do you get? How much money I make when you graduate? I say, you're lucky that McDonald will hire you. <laughs> that means nothing, or may not get a job, because if you have a degree, go to a McDonald, they don't hire you. There's no job placement after art degree, period. Because the society doesn't use that many artists, maybe a few. But they use a lot more graphic designers, you know, uh, or functional artists, which is graphic design, uh, furniture design. So doing pure art form is basically you have the plan, make sure you have other jobs to sustain it. You know, so many of my students graduate, they have become wood uh, art installer, uh, renovators, construction worker, art movers, to actually, you know, some of them open a nursery, uh, art therapy. So I don't know how people from uh, Macau in so I'm asking the question to people who might not understand Chinese is how do you how do you survive as an artist? So his return is I have to do other jobs, which I am actually doing other jobs. I'm not quote quote full time artist. So but the problem is I'm competing with professional artists who are doing hundred percent in New York. And I have to I have no excuse. In fact if you tell them you're a professor, they actually you professor, how do you have time? Because, because we are competing with that level, I'm not a, I'm not a professor who make art on the weekend. I am divided. I'm an artist who teach on Tuesday and Thursdays. So it's a reverse situation. But then you are not hundred percent competing with. I am competing with the people in New York, who are full time. But, but you cannot get to that level by progressingly one step at a time. It's like this, Tony. You are on your boom. You go up there getting all the profits. A few artists get all the profits in art in the art, art market. And the rest is just nothing to share. You know what I mean? So I'm going to get all the profits. I'm going to get all the profits. I'm going to get all the profits. I'm going to get all It's not like a, like a step ladder. They evenly distribute. It's not. And you chose the process that is quite complicated. Yes. And all the, 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 the stages of the process, you have to spend a lot of time and energy to build. Well, building, not then, then afterward, they become painful to keep. Sure. 
Throwing away is the hardest thing for me to do. If I throw something away, my sister knows I please throw it away fully without my eyes seeing it. I just can't do it. You know what I mean? People have to throw away my work. I mean, I cannot. Right? But then keeping it is good luck. I'm paying rent right now in in US. One studio to work, one studio to keep. So, wow, you sell a P is so expensive. You might be rich by now, yes. Or you can see my paycheck going right from here. I don't even see it going to the other guy. They don't have enough space for it too long. They won't fit the elevator, extra charge for bringing it from outside to the inside of the building. Just keep coming. Frankly, I would like to have more sculpture here. How can I bring it to you? you know I, mean? I want to bring more sculpture here. It's just a cause to bring the sculpture to you. So if I'm a painter, the life is really easy. I can roll it up, which I did, and you know, and then maybe frame it locally. How you hit the Daiji Wa, just cut it and just go. China Wa, just cut it. Cut it, the Sun Zi, just hit the Du Shi Biao, just done. Right. But for our field, that's why survive. I call myself in our group. You, those scientists, we call them endangered species. It's like priests in Catholic. Priest, you know, we are not too many of them around, right? Because to sustain is just difficult. So to share with you being a Macau born artist is so rare to find because we went through a lot that is difficult to sustain. Because there are too many things will stop you from. If you ask me, ask people why you do it, there's only one percent left for you doing it. It's only you. I hate to say that not even your family support you sometimes, not even your wife support you sometimes, not even your girlfriend support you, not even your children want you to do it. My best friend, many of them say, why do you do it? You know, because there's really no return, I mean, really, especially. You might have a return if you are lucky that selected zero zero one percent So, you know. Don't give up. Yeah, well, you know, I have not because I have so many chances to give up. Really, too many chances, you know. For first degree, after that, maybe architecture, maybe industrial design, which did apply. They both accepted me, got a job. The guy say, whatever the scholarship they gave you, I'll match them. Just stay working designing product for them. They make so much money on my design by paying me five dollars an hour. 五分个钟头，我同佢设计，佢啲嘢卖得唔知几好。because they like to use your idea to generate return, which is, which is true. And all our designers actually is selling and giving them your service for other people, artistic idea, artistic application for other people to have a functional return, you know, poster, advertising, all that. So. So if you are not really stopping about it, you give up very quickly. So, any other questions? Sorry to keep you so long, but I can entertain and talk for quite a while. My sister knows. <laughs> you say a few sentences is a few hundred. But some artists do not want to talk about this work, but he does, and sometimes he does it. He's struggling. Oh, because my work is about sharing, so it's not about, you know, this is me, not don't touch me, that kind of thing, so. But, uh, uh, but I'm chasing, I haven't finished my, my goal. Uh, you know, I, there, there, how many pieces of wood in the world, how many species, I have, you know, gone down to, seen some, you know. So Australia is quite different than here. The colors are all different in Australia because of different climate and soil content make different <coughs> colors of wood. If you've been to Australia and South America, the wood are just gorgeous in terms of color, if you like color. But they love our wood because they don't have it. They love our rosewood, sunji, they love our uh, cherry and walnut, they love it. So we kind of like exchange on that. 
and uh, like to make a piece in all parts of the world. I have so far finished three continents and two more to go. So, uh, yeah. so, uh, so Africa, Africa, and uh, almost, almost South America, very close. I'm, I think I'll make it. Africa, yeah, Africa. We have, I'm, I believe there will be some beautiful wood there too. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, I'm uh, again. Thank you for inviting me back. Macau is a very thank you. Uh, some people tell me it's a very artistic city. They it seems to like art, so it's great. Uh, uh, so uh, America is a place for opportunity for artists who try to survive may have a chance to survive. Doesn't mean it's easy. It just gives you more opportunity because of space available. You still have to work for pay for that space, but it's space available. But in Hong Kong, I don't think I can put my sculpture anywhere. I mean, this is. This, I mean, frankly speaking, this is this is this is hard enough, you know, just to get that much space. Just to that much space, eighteen inches by eighteen feet, right? That, Hong就是好難找地方做,你叫啲小學生點樣做,你做咗sculpture俾阿媽鬧,真係做乜啊,跟住又,you difficult. Uh, so but I think to me is uh, if I can be that live witness, you know, that hey, you know, I was one of you too, right? We grew up in the same place, have the similar society, similar structure, similar beliefs, similar value structure, so at least I can make it that far, you know, not rich and famous, but that far, maybe the other people can, maybe. It's a possibility. <laughs> and I, yeah, thank you, Professor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.